Today, I'm designing and making my first kinetic sculpture with a laser cutter. I've never made one of these before, but I wanted to give this project a try and learn from the experience. To design this project, I use a software called Rhinoceros and start by drawing a 9-inch square, which defines the overall shape of the product. Then, I draw a circle at the center of the square with a diameter matching the size of the ball bearing that we'll be using for this project. I draw a larger circle and copy both of them outside of the square guideline. We'll use this piece as a spacer. Now we can start drawing the pattern. Since this is my first time making a kinetic sculpture, I decided to go with a simple squiggly line design. I draw a few guidelines and use the curve by points tool to come up with the shape. Using the offset tool, I offset the curve line to both sides, which will be the outline we're laser cutting. We can use the array circle tool to create copies of the shape all around the center pieces. Using the trim tool, I clean up the entire pattern and delete the square outline that we just used as a guide. With the design complete, the last step is to create a 3D model to double check our work. I select all the shapes and use the extrude command to pull the pieces into three dimensions. Using the move command and switching between the three different windows, I shift each piece into place. You can see that one of the pattern layers is flipped over so that the curves are in the opposite direction of the base layer. Based on this 3D model, it looks like this kinetic sculpture pattern is going to work. Now, I insert a leftover sheet of eco birch plywood from one of my previous projects into my laser cutter and start cutting every piece. Since I've never created a kinetic sculpture before, I'm a little worried that this one won't work out the way that I think it will. Like every new project that I design, there's always a chance that it'll be a failure of a project, but that's the best way for any creator to learn and refine their skills. To get over the fear of failure, just look forward to learning from every project and make it fun. If you do that, you'll never disappoint yourself. This project is going to be a great way for me to learn how to use ball bearings to make a piece rotate. I've never done that before, so that's what I'm looking forward to doing the most. These pieces took a total of 16 minutes to laser cut and I decided to use leftover mahogany wood for the lower layer, which is a darker shade than the eco birch. When all the pieces were cut, I brought them to my work table and removed the paper masking tape from every piece. I gathered all the different components for this project including the two large laser cut layers, two wood spacers that I laser cut, a ball bearing, and a wooden dowel. Then I placed the wooden dowel on my miter cutter and cut one end to make it smooth. I flipped the dowel and cut it again to the exact thickness of all the layers when they're assembled. Using Maxi Cure Super Superglue, I apply it around a small cutout at the center of the bottom layer of the kinetic sculpture. I bring over the dowel and attach it to the bottom layer. I apply glue at the dowel and on the bottom layer of the sculpture, bring over the spacer piece and attach the pieces together. Now, we'll set that assembly aside and focus on the ball bearing. I apply glue on the perimeter of the ball bearing, bring over the top layer of the sculpture, align the ball bearing with the center cutout, and push the layer until it locks onto the ball bearing. I apply glue on the remainder of the perimeter of the ball bearing and attach the last spacer. To bring the entire project together, I apply glue on the inner area of the ball bearing, align it with the wooden dowel, and push the assembly into place. And with that, the kinetic sculpture is complete. Now we can test it and see how it came out. I'm excited to see that the project actually works and that the pieces are moving. The one thing that I need to improve, which you'll see in future videos, is the pattern. When the top layer is spinning fast, it doesn't create an optical illusion. When it spins a little slower, it kind of has an interesting visual effect, but I know it could be better. If you enjoyed this project, check out my other Woodcraft videos and consider subscribing. I'll see you again next week.